Well, good evening and welcome to the February 15th Pitt County Planning Board meeting. I'd like to welcome everyone here, um, those in the audience and those on TV. February 15th, of course, is the day after Valentine's Day, so I just want to give everyone a heads up. You can really get ahead of next year's Valentine's and start planning today, since we're the planning <laughs> board. We'll do that. Um, with, uh, with that, I would like to uh, call on Bud Wooten if he would lead us in the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Stand, please. <clears throat> Father, we give you great thanks for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you give each of us, the things that we do in, in uh, your name. And we just ask you to bless us as we begin the process of serving the citizens of this great county and, and empower us with the wisdom and the knowledge to make the decisions that are necessary to conduct a, a good meeting tonight. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, Bud. Um, we have the minutes for the December 21st meeting. Um, you have received those in the packet. Do I hear any motion? So I heard several. Second? Second. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor of the minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Thank you. Uh, we have a development review tonight before us. Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. Let me do, let's do the roll call, Beth. Faye Barefoot? Here. Frank Bradham? Here. Jacob Cox? Lynn Evans? Here. Lyman Hardy? Here. Wanda Harrington? Here. Thomas Harris? Here. Taylor Keith? Clay Malloy? Porter Stokes? Here. William Wooten? Here. Thank you, Beth. Development review, uh, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the only item I have tonight is uh, extension of a major subdivision, Moss Bend Section 3, uh, preliminary plat. <coughs> um, and just some background, normally this wouldn't be a, it's not a major subdivision in, other than the fact that it's an extension of an existing major. A major subdivision is nine lots or more or any addition of an existing street or any adding in any streets to a subdivision. Um, but again, this is only four lots adding to an existing subdivision. Um, it's located on Landing Circle, north of its intersection with NC 33 East. It's located in the Simpson extraterritorial jurisdiction. It's four lots, 4.1 acres. <clears throat> um, here you can see an overhead of the site area. Um, the site area is outlined in red and the lots um, around the big empty space in the middle are Moss Bend sections one and two. Um, to the south uh, you can see NC 33. Uh, the site is not within the 100 year floodplain. It's zoned neighborhood residential NR and that's a Simpson zoning district. Um, and the village of Simpson, Simpson has reviewed the plan and has found no issues with the zoning. Uh, electricity is provided by GUC. Water is by Eastern Pines Water Corporation. And uh, new lots are going to use the existing infrastructure already out there. There's already a paved private road out there and everything like all water lines are already in and electricity service boxes are in place and everything. Um, conditions and requirements for the plan. Um, GUC uh, wants us to add an electric easement across the front of the new lots, 10 feet wide across lots 22 and through 25. And then the planning department wants a copy of uh, the restrictive covenants uh, document integrating the new lots into the Moss Bend Homeowners Association um, that show that who's responsible for road maintenance and road access and everything like that so that we can be sure those lots do have rights to be on that road to access their lots. Here's a photograph of the site area facing southwest. As you can see, it's <laughs> primarily just a field right now. Um, 
Another view of the site area facing west. This is a wooded portion of the new lots. There is a small cemetery inside the tree line in this picture. Um, they're going to leave the cemetery on the property and just put an access easement over it so that <coughs> whoever needs to can get to the graves out there. <coughs> uh, here's a view facing north. The site area is to your left on the picture and just the empty space for Moss Bend is on the right, basically horse pasture. <coughs> um, and here is more of the same uh, field facing east across from the site area. And here uh, is Moss Bend facing south. Uh, the site area is on your right. Technical Review Committee recommends conditional approval of the plan. And I'll take any public comment or questions you have about the plat. Any uh, comments from the public? Any questions or comments from the board? And uh, Mr. Chairman, I just would say um, we did send out public notices to the adjacent property owners. So they're, they're aware that the subdivision okay. is going in. Any questions? Um, move any to approve. Okay. Motion to approve and second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the conditional approval signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Unanimous. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, informational items. <coughs> Eric, you're the one with the information. Yes, sir. I just have a quick uh, item to present on the comprehensive land use plan. Uh, you have copies tonight of our published plan in front of you. Uh, it was adopted on December 5th by the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, as, as, as part of the next step in this process, um, where the goal or the, the, the comprehensive land use plan provides goals and objectives for nine areas of concern, uh, those being growth and development, land use, transportation, appearance. Uh, community services and facilities, natural environment, housing, community health, and then the implementation and administration of that plan. So uh, under each of those goals and objectives, we have specific implementation strategies. And what we've begun to do is prioritize those strategies uh, to, to implement those goals and objectives. And what you have in your packet tonight uh, is an example of, of the, the type of uh, prioritization that we're doing. Um, what's in your packet is actually the community health portion of the plan. Uh, you see we ranked them uh, essentially either high or moderate uh, with an estimated target completion date. Uh, we're not asking for any type of action on this tonight, but what we'd like the board to do is to uh, look through the land use plan, review the strategies, and see if there's any that you feel may need to be a high priority, may need to be a moderate priority, uh, maybe even a low priority, uh, or if, if we need to uh, consider some other type of um, priority system. Uh, so we'll be looking at, at getting that input from the board members if you have any. Uh, I know Ms. Barefoot before the meeting tonight had, had expressed some, some uh, questions about things like schools and accessing schools and making those high priorities. Um, but we'd like to get the board's input and uh, be happy to answer any questions you may have tonight. All right, Eric, I got one Sir. and it has to do with recreation. Is there uh, is there a comprehensive list of all the recreational facilities in the county and who they belong to and what their access availability is? Uh, I think in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan there's a list. Uh, I don't know how to date it is. The plan's <coughs> a few years old already, um, so I don't know if new facilities that have come online have been added to it. I know uh, as part of our CPPW initiative, they've been working to trying to get that list as well. But there, there, is a, there is a list in that master plan. Yes, sir. That's in the? It's in the uh, county's parks and recreation okay. master plan. So they have. if someone wanted to have such a list, they would call county recreation? Yes, sir. They could, they could probably contact parks and recreation. They can give them that information. Okay. Or community schools and recreation, I should say. All right. Other questions? <coughs> Anybody? 
And I just wanted to add too that uh, we'll be looking to, to hopefully bring this list back to the board next month. And uh, so any input you might have, we'd like to go ahead and, and, and get it as soon as possible and we can uh, update our list and, and present that to the board uh, at the March meeting. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. James? And a few other informational items for tonight, Mr. Chairman. Um, and just to follow up on what Eric's brought to you as well, uh, more than likely um, it won't just be the planning board and planning staff taking out all those implementation strategies uh, and, and trying to get those put in place. Uh, we'll be looking at other agencies. It might be community schools and recreation. It may be uh, public health department assisting with some of these. So we'll probably put another um, column in there to deal with which agencies are responsible. And that's very comparable to what we deal with our hazard mitigation plan too, to just identify who would be involved with making it happen. Um, other items uh, besides the land use plan that we'll be hopefully uh, putting into some form of implementation this current year. We have before you tonight, starting on page 14, is the annual work program for the planning department. Beth has also provided to you our shrinking organizational chart. Uh, we are down several staff members given budget constraints and due to some of the um, slump in the development review processes, uh, those positions more than likely will not be filled. So uh, with that, this is the current staffing arrangement. And with that, we've got several major activities we're looking at over the next year. One that you're already familiar with would be the floodplain map updates. Uh, it's those maps, you may recall we had an informational meeting following our October meeting last year where we had uh, representatives from the state of North Carolina here to talk about the process. The maps are currently in a review period by the state and federal government. Once those are re-released back to the county, we'll move forward with our formal process of adopting that, which would include re-adopting or amending our current flood damage prevention ordinance to include those maps. So that will be in the works a little bit later this year. One of the more pressing items is our inspections ordinance update. Again, we've got an ordinance that's been in place for many years, doesn't quite have the right references to some of the residential building codes and so forth. Uh, possibly looking at a fee schedule update too. We're comparing our fee schedule to other surrounding counties as well as comparable counties in terms of size and seeing how ours matches with that. So that's uh, we currently have a draft under review and we'll be uh, bringing that forward kind of through the budget review process. <coughs> Permitting software updates, uh, we continue to try to make improvements there, make it easier for contractors to call in, get information out of the system. But the main thing that we're working on right now are some things that would enhance the current software such as the Southwest Bypass, whenever there's a uh, new development proposed or a new building permit pr proposed on a parcel that's affected by the Southwest Bypass corridor, it automatically informs staff of that and there's a review process that follows that. Similarly, we're looking at riparian buffer uh, issues and you know there are a lot of blue line streams throughout the county. We're trying to get this more automated so we're at least made aware of that as early in the permitting process as possible. So we're doing some internal house cleaning and uh, with the workflow first before we actually get more into a mobile, uh, having access with mobile phones and so forth into the database. Um, Swift Creek Watershed Project is a continuation. You may recall we have Clean Water Trust Fund funding here that uh, is providing um, us to work with a particular consulting group to come up with some alternatives to handle uh, storm water in the Swift Creek watershed. And that's basically the southern part of Greenville, Winterville, and uh, northern part of Aden. Community garden assistance, we continue to promote that and try to assist with some of the activities there. And there's looking to be an expansion next year with uh, some other sites with our Communities Putting Prevention to Work grant. And certainly there's a number of development, development uh, community development activities we're involved with. Two new grants have just recently been released to the county. 
uh, for single family rehabilitation and also urgent repair. We're also looking to bring the College Park group back in this year to build a, a house. Hopefully it'll be closer to getting it done within war, one week versus one month over the next, this summer. So we'll be uh, bringing you reports back to, from that and we're looking at, again, partnering with the town of Winterville to have one done in that community. Lots of information. I didn't hit everything in the work program, but on page 14 you'll see the complete list as well as the staff members that are assigned to certain these certain activities so uh welcome any questions or comments you have about this calendar year's work program thank you james any questions if not moving on just wanted to bring you an update one of the last items you dealt with uh last year was an amendment to the zoning ordinance concerning the definition of a halfway house that was approved by the commissioners on January the 9th. And uh, just to bring you further up to date, we do have a request in for uh, from a citizen to establish a halfway house around the Stick Valley community here in Pitt County. So uh, that will be handled by the commissioners at their February 20th meeting next Monday. Have our departmental uh, reports in your package tonight and also several articles in here dealing with a number of activities that are related to uh, items you work on as a planning board. And I uh, did want to highlight uh, one of the articles deals with our homeless population here in the county. You may recall several years ago the county adopted a 10-year plan to end chronic homelessness. Uh, what we started last year was an event called Project Homeless Connect where we try to reach out and contact as many of these homeless individuals as possible, bring them in, in this case to the Greenville Convention Center for a one-day event where there's a lot of services that are available, everything from getting haircuts to dental services to job training to health screenings everybody's there at one fell swoop where uh, <coughs> folks that are in need can come out and get some services so this year is slated for wednesday february the 29th i know we've had volunteers from the planning board before to assist with it and certainly if you're interested in that you can go to our website and there's a volunteer form that you can sign up with so with that mr chairman uh here's our website if you're interested in going online to check out some other activities there are no questions. That's all I have for tonight. James, okay. what's the hours on that February 29th? It runs from 9 o'clock till 2 p.m. at the Greenville Convention Center. So about a half a day. Thank you. All right. Would um, encourage members to uh, seriously consider volunteering. It's a great success last year and uh, we appreciate some of the funding that comes in from outside sources and I know Oakmont Baptist for example has been very supportive of some of these activities and uh, would certainly encourage you to participate if possible. Thank you. Anything from the board? I have one question uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, house numbering. What is that? Get a pretty good compliance on that. That is one of the projects that we're involved with, and you might see it's an ongoing project on our work program on page two. We call it the eSave program, where we go out and select a certain area of the county and do a ride through to ensure everyone has their numbers posted and posted appropriately or have the right numbers posted. A lot of times we've got several areas north of the river that we've been through this <coughs> process with, and it it is quite time consuming sending notices out to ensure folks have it listed right, but we've gotten a good amount of compliance. What we're looking at, in most cases when we go out for the first time, only about 66% have them appropriately displayed they might have the numbers up. It might be a, a color that doesn't contrast with their home. There's some issues there, but usually about a third of the folks don't have them appropriately displayed. So that's when we uh, go through an enforcement process. We would encourage folks, if they have any questions about their addressing, please contact our office. We'll be glad to ensure that things 
are properly displayed. Any other questions? Thank you, Bud. Hear a motion? Second. I have a motion to adjourn. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much.